An event-driven architecture is characterized by the creation and the use of events to drive the system, typically by exchanging events through an event bus. These events tell the system about changes happening elsewhere without specifying what should be done about them, leading to systems that are highly decoupled, and each service can scale and importantly fail independently. The essence in being event-driven lies in how components react to events independently without direct coupling. But sometimes we have a variant of this where we want someone to perform a specific task asynchronously, so we will send them a command instead through a command bus. In this lesson, let's compare the two: what each means, how they operate, and when you might use one over the other. Let's start with the basics. An event is a notification that something has already happened. It's a fact and is immutable. For example, an event might announce that a customer has placed an order. The event is not directed at anyone. Maybe no one is listening for this event, or maybe there are multiple listeners. Either way, it doesn't really matter to us because we are just putting the information out there. On the other hand, a command is a request to perform a specific action. Is an instruction. Imagine sending a command to process a payment, and this command is directed specifically at the payment service because they are the only ones that should perform this action. Events and commands are both messages, but the way they communicate in a system is very different. Events are broadcasted widely, allowing any part of the system to listen in and react to them independently. Commands, however, are targeted. They are sent to a specific component who is responsible for carrying out the action, which requires a more direct and often synchronous type of communication. Because unlike events, which are fire and forget messages where you just put information out there, with commands you want a specific component to do something, and the chances are you need to know when that thing is done and the result of, say, processing the payment. Maybe a transaction ID, the amount that was debited, and so on. And you also want to know if the task cannot be completed and what the problem was. So commands often follow a request-response pattern, although the actual response itself might come through in the form of an event. Take our process payment command for example. When the payment has been processed successfully, the payment service will publish a payment processed event to the event bus. Which the original sender of the command can subscribe to and know when the payment has been processed. Other example events might be user created, restaurant notified, user notified, and order completed, and so on. And the corresponding commands might be create user, notify restaurant, notify user. And as you can see, often the command is followed by an event. They are the cause and the effect before and after of a change in the system. And the names use verbs in the present tense versus past tense, but an event is just a notification of something happening. They're not always the result of a command. They can also be the result of a lack of something happening, like a timeout event, for example. In terms of their pros and cons, events promote loose coupling, allowing systems to scale, evolve, and fail independently of each other. But they can make the system less predictable and complex. Precisely because you don't know who's listening to the event and what an event might trigger elsewhere, which can make handling errors particularly difficult. Command, on the other hand, simplifies your control flow as you know where each command is going, which also makes them easier to debug. The downside is that you increase the coupling between components. In any given context, you should be explicit about if you're sending a command or if you're publishing an event. So you would apply the appropriate handling and make the correct assumptions. For example, what technology you use as the bus can be different. An event bus needs to be able to broadcast to multiple subscribers. So something like EventBridge or SNS will be a good fit here, but SQS is not because it doesn't do broadcasts. Whereas for commands, SQS is a great fit. Precisely because it's a targeted delivery where you will have only one receiver per SQS queue, but also importantly because messages will stay on the queue until they are either expired or have been processed successfully, which is an important requirement when it comes to commands. 
Finally, we have patterns such as event sourcing and the CQRS that lets you combine both events and commands to great effect, where each play an important role. Event sourcing makes sure you capture every change as an event, as you model your system state as a series of events as opposed to snapshots. And the CQRS separates read and write operations to optimize performance, where the write operations are modeled as commands. We'll talk more about event sourcing and the CQIS later this week, and I'll give you a proper introduction to both. Until then, I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.